Let's explore. Let's learn. Let's collaborate. Let's come together at Cisco Live 2024 Amsterdam. Let's, Let's go. go. We are really thrilled to have all of you with us for this exciting event filled with innovation and collaboration and cutting edge technology. Over the next few days, you're going to have the opportunity to engage with industry leaders and to explore all the latest advancements in networking and to connect with like-minded professionals. So whether you're a seasoned expert or just starting your journey, Cisco Live is the place to be. Get ready for an immersive experience inspiring keynotes, hands-on laughs, thought-provoking innovation talks, and illuminating interviews. All right, guys, well, of course, don't miss the world of solutions. We've got everything you need to know about networking, the latest advancements in collaboration, not to mention deep dives on IoT, as well as, oh my gosh, data analytics, and of course, artificial intelligence. At the Cisco Showcase, explore Cisco's latest products and solutions, engage in live demos, and don't miss out on the interactive networking cloud solutions wall. The Meeting Village, this is where the most creative individuals get together to network, to share, and to figure out what to do next. They're having meetings in the Meeting Village. And here at the Innovation Theater, we'll hear more about use cases, success stories, thought leadership, and we'll explore the latest and greatest trends in the technology industry. Now, here in the Hub, we have got tech teams and networking professionals. We have IT leaders, literally thousands of people who are all making their way right here to share their ideas and to talk through challenges and even to engage in a little friendly competition with one another. Now, while you're here in the Hub, you can explore Cisco's solutions for hybrid work and for smart buildings, sustainability, AI. You can connect with Cisco enthusiasts at Cisco Insider. You can learn about the latest in security at Security Central and you can shop. We've got the latest merchandise and exclusive Cisco Live products right over there in the amazing Cisco store. And of course, the keynotes. We'll hear from Cisco's leaders on how we are embracing AI-powered capabilities. Well, throughout the conference, we'll be joined by multiple Cisco top experts right here in the Cisco TV studios. We want to know what it means for you to be at Cisco Live. So join a conversation using your favorite social media channel using the hashtag Cisco Live in the app. And tune in to CiscoLive.com for the full enhanced viewing experience. Join us for three days of inspiration, learning, and, and fun. fun. Welcome to Cisco Live 2024 in Amsterdam. Let's, Let's go. go. And welcome, everyone. We are delighted to have you here on the live stream. This is this exciting moment when this all kicks off here in Amsterdam at Cisco Live 2024. We are thrilled wherever you happen to be joining us from all around the world. Welcome in and welcome to your event. This really is all about you and we're absolutely delighted. My name is Steve Bolter. I am one of four of your hosts. You will get to know all of us very well over the next few days. And I'm joined here on the set by my friend Cedric Nivalder. Hello, Cedric. Good morning, Steve, which oh. is basically Dutch for good you morning. You are so good, right away, right out of the gate. I love that. I love it too. It's it's great to be back here in Amsterdam. Like, you know, it's it's just awesome to be here with you again, Steve. I, I missed you, buddy. Well, thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. It's hard to believe that it's already been a year, and last I year I had no voice. So this year we're all here together, and the voice is strong, and I'm feeling good about it. Let's talk about what we're headed into right now. At this moment, we're just under 30 minutes away from our opening keynote, uh, kicking off at 9.30 a.m. Central European time. I am so excited for this, and all of you can stay right here with us on the live stream, right up to the first word and through the last. Oliver Tuzik is with us, Jonathan Davidson, G2 Patel, along with Ronek Desai, um, Adele Trombetta, Fletcher Previn. We've got a, an, an all-star team here, and Cedric, I'm really excited because we're going to hear all the different ways that we can access infinite possibilities by harnessing the power of AI. And man, we are going to hear so much about Gen AI over the course of the week here. Oliver Tuzik, president of Cisco EMEA, along with Cisco's technology leaders, they're going to really unpack our game-changing technology announcements and innovations. They will unveil all of the great Cisco solutions that are brand new. They'll demonstrate our commitment here at Cisco to creating a unified experience for our customers using AI-driven capabilities. And again, we're going to bring you every word of it. It's going to start just under 30 minutes. 
from right now, so don't go away. Now, as I mentioned, Cedric, we are two of the hosts. Yep. We have two other hosts yep. on the live stream all week long, yep. and we're going to meet them right now. We're going to head out to the keynote space. Rob Boyd and Nish Parker out there. Rob, Nish, hello, my friends. Hello. 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 I am so happy to be back here working with Nish again. We are pausing to get our pictures taken from the SLR camera over here. <laughs> I think those are the ones that, that get placed in the uh, the post event keynote. Uh, PowerPoint, if you will, afterwards. Guys, the energy in here is incredible. Yes. The big thing that jumps out for me this year, it's the same location that we were in before. The music is still loud, the bass still travels all the way through you when you're in the room, which is fantastic. I don't know if you can see this, Steve, but we've got lasers. Lots of really <laughs> nice lasers. I think they're going to do something special with it. Have you been able to pick up on any of that? I have. I mean, it, the energy, as you said, is amazing in here. I want to kind of play that game, you know, you avoid the lasers and you climb over them and oh. then under them, like some kind of Mission Possible type of theme. Um, but the music in here is really tense, is getting people excited for the keynote. What are you most excited about this week, Rob? Just one thing. One thing. One what thing. the heck are we doing with AI? I feel like we don't hear enough about AI and what everybody's doing with it. I think it's time. I'm just going to make the call here right now. We need to speak up. We need to quit sweeping this under the rug, and we need to share what it is we're doing with those two letters. Yes, you for think? sure. Yeah, oh, 100%. Okay. I'm excited to hear AI. I bet you anything it's going to be mentioned in the keynote. You Cross and I can play fingers. AI bingo. <laughs> they will know, know that we've been heard. <laughs> exactly. exactly. But I know through the week as well, there's going to be so many guests joining us in the studio. We're going to be out in the world of solutions. And we're going to show how AI is actually coming to life and how customers are using it in a cost-effective, safe, um, and ethical way, right? Yep, absolutely. In just a moment, she's going to go run and find some people to talk to. I think you've got some executives lined up. I'm going to go try and dig out some Cisco champions. These are all my friends that basically hold me up behind the scenes with knowledge and just an understanding of everything outside of Cisco. So we're going to bring all that to you in just a moment. So Steve, let's go back to you in the studio. Rob, thank you so much. I love that you're going to track down the uh, the champions and some of the executives. You are our eyes and ears out there on the keynote floor bringing it all to us. You can see that we have not opened up the show space here on the exhibit floor. The world of solutions will open up as soon as the keynote comes to a close and we'll be bringing it all to you live right from here in the studio. Um, Cedric, we are together. We're here in this amazing space and this yep. amazing show to gain knowledge, to explore possibilities. Cisco, as we just heard, we're harnessing these AI capabilities to help us succeed in technological transformation. And transformation, I think, is such a core part of what we do. That is what this event is about. How do we improve? How do we grow the capabilities of what people are doing, right? Absolutely. Yeah, um, let's talk social media for a moment because we've got all these folks watching us, joining us from all over the world. How do they stay in contact with us and how do we stay in contact with them? Absolutely, it's a, it's a two-way street for us, right? Like we show you what's going on here, but also you need to let us know how you're feeling about the event, right? So first of all, we're on Cisco.com, Cisco Live, and Cisco social media channels um, where you can just tune in and understand like what we're doing here. And fun fact, Steve, actually we're rolling 24-7 on CiscoLive.com. Um, there are subtitles in seven languages, and you can send us some emojis if you want to. And I'm very interested, Steve, what is your favorite emoji? Oh, my favorite emoji? Actually, my favorite emoji is the eye roll emoji. It's the one that I seem to use most in texts and, and Facebook. I don't know if that makes me ironic or what that is, but uh, yeah, that's the one that I click all the time, especially okay. when I see something that just baffles me. It's always an eye roll emoji. Okay. Although I do love the laughing with the tears coming down. What is that actually called? You're younger than I am, you would know these things. The laughing crying emoji? Sure, we'll call it the laughing crying emoji. I That's think perfect. So. <laughs> All right, so as people reach out to us, the yep. social media area, have you had a chance to head over into the social media zone yep. and talk to the folks who are back there? What did yep. you see when you were over on that yep. side? So we have a whole team here of our social media team that will interact with you on our social media channels as well. So as I said, let us know how you're feeling. Send us your thoughts, your pictures, whatever you want to send us, and use hashtag Cisco Life and Mia. I'll say that again. It's underneath me as well right now, but hashtag Cisco Life and Mia. Steve and I and the whole crew will be watching out for what you'll be sharing with us as well. That's absolutely right. This event is always about connection. It's about human beings coming together to create remarkable things, to uh, create better experiences, to help with digitization capabilities. So it's not just about growing organizations and mm -hmm. growing companies. It's how do we connect together in partnership? And all week long here in the studio, in all of the iTalks, in the keynote today, we're going to hear it again, again again, again, and again. Partnership, partnership, partnership. Cisco is not an island. We are always, always, always better when we work together in partnership and meeting people and being together. That's what it's all about. So Cedric, before, we, hang on to that for a moment. Hang on to that for just a moment. I want to hear the idea, but I do want to go out to Rob because I believe Rob has one of our Cisco champions with us right now. 
I do, Steve. Thank you so much. And actually what I found was not a Cisco champion, although I'm sure you're a champion very much so, just not officially in the program, perhaps. But Sergi, you're telling me this is not your first Cisco Live, but you come here specifically on, uh, from the learning perspective. But tell us a little bit about what you do first and what brings you here. What value do you find in the event? Well, I'm a network engineer and a junior network architect, and I do a lot of network designs and network troubleshooting. So I like Cisco Live because of a lot of technical sessions that I can learn new stuff, especially about network programmability and automation, in which I'm very interested. So on the network programmability and automation, are there any, is there anything specific that you're looking for us to announce here, or perhaps questions you came in to, to get some better answers for while you've got access to so many experts? No, it's uh, general knowledge mainly. I've, I've got no um, specific questions, but usually Cisco Life is pretty packed with useful information for everyone. Is there expectations that you're supposed to bring certain amounts of knowledge back because you're the guy who got to go, or did more members of your team also get to travel here? Yeah, I've got my uh, manager here as well, the owner of the company. He's here. He's, I've got him interested in network automation as well, so he's attending a technical session at the moment. I'm kind of the most proficient with network automation in my company at the moment. We're trying to bring other guys on board, and they're very, very uh, passionate about it, and they're very interested in it, so surely it's very helpful to them as well. That's very good. I'm always uh, admiring those of us who I think it's a necessity that we have to really commit to lifelong learning, and it's a lot of very urgent learning. But Serge, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Appreciate your time. Enjoy the rest of the show. And with that, we'll go back to Steve in the studio. Thank you so much. Give our thanks to Serge as well. It's great to hear his, uh, his views on how he's enjoying the event so far. I cut you off a moment ago, Cedric. What yep. were you about to say? Because I think this was an important idea. You know, I think when you said that it's about relationship building, about elevating people, about coming together, at Cisco we're just really good, I think, in connecting the unconnected. We hear it again and again, right? It's such a big catchphrase for us here at Cisco. We hear it across the show. This is where the best and the brightest minds in IT Absolutely. come together. We just heard it from Serge, to learn, to experience, to gain education and certification and inspiration. Everything that's all around us here right now in the world of solutions and across the hub, it's all tailor-made for creativity and digitization and AI and security. Really everything that an organization of any size, any organization, including the ones just like yours, it's what you need to thrive and to differentiate at speed and at scale. So, Cedric, I'm going to ask very quickly while we get settled out here on the keynote space, you are mostly having internal conversations with yes. your teams, right? But those internal conversations in that go-to-market strategy concept within your Cisco UK team, you are hearing from customers every single day about what it is that they want from us, what they want us to do, and I think that's reflected on the show floor, right? Absolutely. I've said it to you before, Steve. It's all about AI, AI, AI. Right, mm -hmm. those are the two letters that I think come up the most. Uh, we'll see lots of innovations from our collaboration team to all across our portfolio, how AI can elevate your organization and how we can actually make it more connected and how we can be proactive with our technology uh, to help you there. So I think AI is one. Uh, the other one I think is sustainability, Yeah. right? I think it was our major team last year but it's still present all over the conference uh, here as well. And there is a great sustainability boot that we will visit uh, later this week. So I'm really excited about that as well. Excellent. And That's I think our up. partners are heavily focused on sustainability as well. So I'm looking out into the keynote space. It's starting to fill up, and I believe Nish Parker has found a friend. Hi, Nish. I have found a friend. Thanks so much, Steve. I'm here with Rodney Clark. Rodney, you are the SVP of Small, Medium Business and Partnerships. A big, big role. How are you doing today? Nish, I'm doing great today. This is so fantastic. What a great environment and great to be here. Amazing, thanks so much. So you've been with Cisco, I think about four weeks. You're brand new. Um, you're leading, obviously, our partner small medium business organization. What are your impressions so far? What are you most excited about? I'm most excited about joining a company that's a leading edge technology company. Leading edge from our secure networking to observability, the fact that AI is built within every single product in our portfolio. It's so great to be a part of it and it's great to be here witnessing it live at Cisco Live today. For sure, and I know we're going to hear a lot about AI this week. We already have mentioned it a lot on the broadcast, but you're going to hear from our executives in the world of solutions. It's going to be throughout the show. Um, now, Rodney, this is your first time at Cisco Live, right? Um, so what surprised you? What are you going to be up to this week? Well, this week, it's all about the customer. Cisco Live is all about the customer. And I'm excited to see how our messages land with our customers, from our largest enterprise customers to those small and medium enterprises that do business with us and rely on us every day to bring value and deliver value. 
Got it. And obviously, you know, here at Cisco Live, Cisco is really powerful in partnership with the partner organizations that we work with. And I know yesterday we had a very special day with our Cisco partners. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, we had about a thousand of our partners come in. And I, most people know Cisco is a partner-led company. We talk about how important those partners are to us. And we talked about things, Nish, like AI that you and I discussed just a second ago. We talked about our services platform and how we enable them to deliver more services to our customers and it was also a great opportunity for them to give us feedback on how they can better service our customers. So what a powerful day as a small subset of Cisco Live. I love that, and obviously our partners are an extension of the experience and how they experience Cisco, so I really love that. Um, so, you know, like we said, partners do play a key role in bringing value to our customers. What do you want our customers to know about our partner ecosystem? Yeah, our, again, Cisco is a partner-led company. Partners are not an extension of what we do, they are Cisco in essence. And so when we bring our value to a customer that is Cisco capability, along with our partner capability, we're really bringing the best that the industry has to offer. And so we're going to continue to invest in those partners, in those partnerships, so that we can deliver that value to our customers. And again, that's what I want to hear about today at Cisco Live, is how those two things come together. And do you know what's awesome actually, Rodney, is Oliver Tusek, who obviously was in your role just before you four weeks ago, is going to be joining us on stage shortly. Um, so that's really great to see. Obviously, you know, he's very excited about our partners, about small, medium business. I'm sure he's going to take that message through the week as well, right? Truth be told, I'm going to sit right in the front row and do a virtual high five with Oliver as he's up there representing Cisco. I love that. So have you walked around the world solutions? When did you arrive? What have you seen so far? I got in, what, Monday, Sunday morning, 9 o'clock and immediately came into meetings with our partners and with our customers, walked around the solution showcase, and oh my gosh, just blown away. As you mentioned, I'm four weeks in, so I'm still sponging and learning everything. Talk to so many people around our technologies, talk to so many customers who are implementing it. I'm, I'm riding on a high right now, I'm pretty buzzed from the excitement of all of it. I still have more meetings and more solution walks to do before the end of the day, so I'm, let, let me add it, Nish, let me get at it. <laughs> I love it. Well, Rodney, I'm going to let you go and get on with all of that. Let's head back to the studio. Thank you so much. Rodney, welcome. We are so glad to have you here with us. Bravo, Rodney, well done. And he said it right there. Cisco is a partner-driven company, right, Cedric? Yep. Absolutely, and I think what he also said is, Cisco Live is for you guys, right? For customers, for partners. And I had a chance to walk around yesterday and like um, basically talk to a few of our attendees in the world of solutions, and they always come back and it's like, they're like super excited. They're looking forward to this event every single year. And it's a meeting hotspot for them, right? We have this whole content part, but also you bump into old friends, you, build, you bump into old colleagues, you make new friends, you talk to our executives. So it's, it's also about relationships, Steve. It's so much about relationships. I want to come back to the technology for just a moment with you, yep. Cedric, while we have a second, and, and, and we're setting up for our next segment over here. Um, we've already said it, what, four times here. AI, we're going to hear it again and again and again and again. It is about how it empowers people. It's yeah. how it empowers relationships. Why are we such a leader here in the AI area? And what a lot of people don't know is that Cisco has been engaging in the AI frontier for a long time now. This is not new. We've been in the better part of this you know, for a decade at this point. So what we're talking about right now is generative AI. That's the buzz. It is actually part of a much larger movement in artificial intelligence being driven by data science and by machine learning and by human connection. These are the things that reached maturity a while ago. Yep. But for us here at Cisco, we were an early builder, an early investor, an early adopter in predictive AI. We've seen it for a while and we're seeing it out here. We've got AI all across the portfolio. WebEx, uh, world-class audio and video and language intelligence within WebEx capabilities. Great, AI, noise filtering, cinematic focus, automatic language transition. If we look into Cisco security products, which we'll talk a ton about this week, they're enhanced with AI-driven threat detection and anomaly prediction capabilities. They're making the world safer for our customers. So we're moving AI into full stack observability. We're going to hear a lot about that. But again, the whole idea is how do we build organizations up and what are organizations made of? They're made of people. It's a relationship, people yeah. to people thing. So before we head back over to you, because I know you've got some thoughts on that, I actually want to go back out to the show floor because in my feed I can see that Nish has a very special, not just guest, but a series of guests with her. Hey Nish. 
Hey Steve, yes, I've not got one guest, I've not got two guests, I've got three guests with me today. Super special guests as well, may I add. I'm here with Carrie Palin. Carrie, you are our SVP and CMO. How are you doing? Doing great. I literally landed in the Netherlands about three hours ago and I'm so excited to be here. You look fresh, you look wrapped up for Amsterdam. It's a little bit cold outside, but we're going to have a really great week here at the Rye. Nieves, you are our VP of EMEA Marketing. How are you doing? I'm good. It's been so exciting to be here. The first day yesterday was fantastic. So yeah, I'm amazing. Amazing. Thanks so much. And finally, Brittany Bartlett, you are our VP of Global Field Marketing, obviously including EMEA here in the region. How are you doing? I am doing fantastic. We've been on a little EMEA tour, landed here in Amsterdam, kicked off yesterday. It has been absolutely incredible. Awesome. So Carrie, I'm going to come to you first. What are you most excited about this week? I know you've been to several Cisco Lives. What's different? What's exciting this year? Well, there's a lot going on this year, but I'm really excited to listen to our GMs this morning, get into where AI is permeating our entire portfolio. It's obviously the theme of the year and sort of, I, get, I think, of the next decade in tech. And so there's a lot going on at Cisco that I can't wait for our customers to hear and understand. But I also am just excited to commune with everyone here. The audience, the, the energy is so palpable, and I can't wait to sit down and just hear what they have to say. Thank you, Karen. Nieves, in contrast, this is uh, your first ever Cisco Live, right? What's it like to be here in the room as a first timer? It's amazing. I am literally blown away by the magnitude and the energy around. It's been a fantastic day yesterday, and I can't wait to connect with partners, customers, and colleagues. Thank you, Nieves. And Brittany, I know obviously you lead all of our global field teams, as I've said, including EMEA. So what are you excited about this week? What's different this year? What are you going to be up to this week? Well, the energy here is absolutely electric, and it's so great to see this many people. I know we have record attendance, so that's super exciting. Um, and I'm just really excited to get to spend more time with our customers, our partners, and of course with our colleagues here at Cisco, too. Awesome. And Carrie, I know this week we are talking a lot about AI. It's AI, AI, AI. We were saying we were going to play AI bingo this week, but it's not just a buzzword. It's not just something we say. There's a lot of meaning to it around, you know, we're going to hear that in the keynotes. We'll hear it in the World of Solutions. How is AI showing up at Cisco Life? Oh, it's everywhere, which is the really exciting thing. It isn't anecdotal for us. It's actually something we've been into for many, many years. It's across our portfolio in networking and observability in security. You'll see all of it this week, but also tease out a little bit about the promise of AI with Splunk potentially closing soon, we hope. And uh, that with the combination of Cisco is pretty, pretty thrilling. Exciting times. Now, this year the theme is Let's Go. What does Let's Go mean for you? And I'll ask for you to say one sentence, what is Let's Go? What does it mean? How are you experiencing the event? Well, it, for me, it means that we just absolutely hit it hard in the back half of our fiscal year with our partners and our customers and just get it going. Thank you. Nieves, what does Let's Go mean? To me, it means Let's Go exploring opportunities on how to work with customer partners and the Cisco team. All right, and Brittany, finally coming to you, Let's Go is, what does it mean to you? Well, we were with a bunch of our partners yesterday, and so many of them were talking about the opportunity ahead, and I think this is just the, it is the time to go capture that out with our customers in the market. Got it, and just my final question for you, obviously we're here, the keynote's about to begin, is there anyone you're particularly excited to connect with, any session you're particularly excited to attend, any topic you want to discuss, what's top of mind for you? Okay, um, I'm really looking forward, actually we have two sessions I'm excited about. One is a session with the Netherlands partners about sales and marketing alignment, uh, which I'm part of the panel, so I'm really looking forward to that. And then our whole inclusion series is also fantastic. I saw that around the Inclusive Future program, we've got lots in the sustainability zone as well. Well, thank you to all of you for joining me here. We're about to go into the keynote, but for now, let's head back to the studio. Thank you so much, Nish. What a great job. Uh, I appreciate it. I'm so glad you got those wonderful humans with you. Thank you to Carrie, to Nieves, to Brittany uh, for giving us their feedback. And Nieves, especially, thank you for telling us what Let's Go is all about, what it actually means. I mean, we see it here in the branding. We see it all around us on the show floor. But it is that drive. It's that drive to create. It's that drive to connect. It's that drive to digitize, to produce, to elevate organizations. Right, Cedric? Yeah, because if you think about it, Steve, the technology landscape is moving faster than ever. Right, so I think for me it would mean let's go. We at Cisco are ready to tackle that, right? We are your partner to help you tackle any, like we are your partner actually, yeah, tackle, helping you to tackle um, problems in your organization. We're here to help you and we're just ready to go. Like, 
Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're on it. And again, this is what Rodney Clark was just talking about. He's our new senior VP of partner sales. Um, we said it before. It's what he was saying. Partnership is what Cisco Live is all about. In fact, I think Nish mentioned this as well. Yesterday, February 5th, it was Partner Day yep. here at the show, here at Cisco Live. And Mia, such an inspiring day. It featured all of the coolest innovations that are driving partner profitability. We heard a lot about strategic thinking from a lot of our strategic customers. Um, what we heard, what we'll hear in the keynote, what we heard in the iTalk space. All of these different ways that Cisco and our partners are innovating and growing together with security and APIs and lifecycle management and fulfillment. Um, you had an opportunity to walk the show floor a few times. I've been stuck right back here. Yes. But what are you seeing on the partner front out there and who do you think is really representing that partner ecosystem? Uh, who do you look at and you say, mm, there it is, that's what I love to see Cisco doing. It's actually a very good question. I think we have loads of partners on the, on the, um, in the world of solutions, right? Surrounded by Cisco technology. So I think what I explored yesterday is just, you know, we have a great partnership with Live Nation and they have a really cool booth where you can stand and you can become a rock star and like it has all of these DSLR cameras and it makes like a 3D model mm. and it kind of helps to elevate the VIP experience in like stadiums for concerts and so on. So I think that's great. Very, right. very and, cool. And, and jumping into the partner part, or do we have to go? Really quick, really quick. You've got I'm, 10 seconds. Give I it have to 10 me. seconds. Okay, great. I'm really excited because Oliver was our previous partner leader. I'm just really excited why he's going to say in the keynote as our new EMEA leader. And I'm so glad you said it because we're two and a half minutes out from that keynote. So for all of you tuning in, we're headed to it. First, though, I'm going to head to Rob Boyd out on the keynote floor. Hello, Rob. Hey, Steve. How are you? Steve, thank you so much. We uh, have something here. What do you like more than champions? Cisco champions. And if we'll just pan over here, then have each of you say your names. You're all Cisco champions. That's the connective thread here. But tell me who you are and what do you do? Uh, my name is Amr Nasher. I'm based in, uh, I own a Cisco partner in Saudi Arabia. I'm uh, part of Cisco champions. <laughs> awesome, thank you for that. And yourself? Shibu and Bergkamp, owner of Three Corners, and we do a lot of WebEx and everything collaboration. Excellent. And sir, with the cape, tell us who you are, what do you do, and why the cape? Well, my name is David Penaloza. I'm a consulting engineer for Verizon Business. And, well, I got this cape as part of the social recognition and all this well, collaboration we do in the event. And why not wearing it? Why wouldn't you wear underwear? See, it fits so well and it's comfy, isn't it? No, I love the idea, especially when we've had a little bit of the rainfall outside. It's a little bit of cool. I could see where that would very much be a help, but then I get hot underneath the capes and I always have trouble finding one that works with my current outfit. But regardless, you guys come here, you've all been to Cisco Live multiple times because I've we continue to see each other. Is that wrap up or hurry up? Send it back, got it. We're going to go back to the studio. I didn't understand our hand signals. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Rob, I appreciate it. You always do get hot under the cape. I've always said that about you and uh, yeah, you're just proving it to us here right now. We are headed into our opening keynote of Cisco Live 2024 Amsterdam. We're so glad to have you with us. All the different ways that we can access infinite possibilities by harnessing that power of AI. We've got Oliver Tuzik, president of Cisco EMEA, along with Cisco's technology leaders. They are going to unpack Cisco's game-changing technology announcements, all of our innovations. They are going to unveil all of our latest solutions here at Cisco and really demonstrate our commitment to creating a unified experience for our customers by using AI-driven capabilities. All right, so Cedric, as we are ready yep. to head in and we're going to see the camera shift over, I cut you off a moment ago. As you were walking around the show floor, there were some other innovations that you saw, some of them AI-driven. Give us maybe one or two more of those before we throw it out. Ooh, that's a good question. I think, Steve, um, I'm always a big, big on collaboration, right? I think you gave a very good overview already of what we have in our portfolio, but I just think it's great how we empower a hybrid work environment for our customers. So I think that's one where a lot of AI is. Um, the other one I would call out is that I was at the CX boot as well, and I think you know what? You know, we have a whole customer experience department to help you basically implement all of the technologies that you basically um, procure from Cisco. Right, and I think we, we cannot forget those guys, right? And I am so glad that you brought up CX, and yeah. I'll just jump back in because a lot of people forget that what CX is about is working together with our customers who have already made an investment in yep. Cisco to say, you have it, it's yours, you own it, it's within your infrastructure and your organization. How do you maximize it? How do you take that investment that you've already made and really grow it to its biggest and its best potential? And really, that's what CX covers for us. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's just 
they, they bought it, right? And we are just going to help them to elevate the organization, to elevate their IT. Mm -hmm. And, oh, the world of solutions is going to open <laughs> us all right now. <laughs> Something <laughs> like that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey, you know what? While this is going on, because we don't want to cover a lot of content with this, let's talk social media, yep. all right? Because I want to make sure that all of you who are out here with us on the, uh, the live stream, that you continue reaching out to us and then throughout the keynote. So go ahead and give us those uh, uh, social media hits. I think the banner is on screen already, but we can engage with you or you can engage with us using hashtag Cisco Life EMEA. I'll say that again because the banner disappeared, but hashtag Cisco Life EMEA. Let us know what you think. The keynote, it's back in. Good, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, so yeah, tell us what you think about the keynote. Tell you think uh, what you think, whether you're in the room or at home, if you're on the showcase, like just, we want to hear from you, right? Absolutely, we are 45 seconds away from heading out to Oliver Tuzik over in the keynote space. And again, we want to make sure that you stay with us all the way throughout, not only the entire keynote, but the entire broadcast. We will always be right here waiting for you in this Cisco TV studio. Either me or Cedric or Nish or Rob or a bunch of us will be waiting for you right here between each segment. We'll jump between what we're doing here and also out to the innovation talks where there is so much for you to learn. And as Cedric just said a moment ago, on that social media, we want to hear your commentary. If you hear something out in the keynote and you think, there, that is what I've been waiting for, that's what I've been looking for, terrific. Go ahead and post that up. Feel free to create some quotes and put those up. Send in photos of wherever you're watching from. We're going to head out to the keynote space right now. We are so excited to have you with us and excited to hear from Oliver and the entire team. Away we go. Enjoy. Please welcome President Cisco Amir, Oliver Tusik. Good morning and welcome to Amsterdam, the beautiful city of Amsterdam, and welcome to Cisco Live. It's, as you all know, this is our flagship event, and this year it's even bigger than before, with more than 16,000 participants. We're fully booked, and these people come from more than 99 countries. I hope we still get to the 100. This shows the diversity of the region. That shows the power. And we even have people from the Americas and APJC. So warm welcome to all of you. Cisco Live is our event to talk about the news, share the technology innovation, and to learn from each other. That's why we're here, to get better every single day. And during this event, we also utilize the chance to meet some good old friends, and make some new friends with more than 4,000 first-timers here this year. And this is also our chance to say thank you, my chance to say thank you to all the people that were joining and celebrating together our success. Let me start with a group that is right behind me right now, our press and analysts. Thanks for joining us, thanks for sharing the news, a special thanks for always being critical, giving us tough feedback and making us better every single day. And of course, all our amazing customers in this room. Thanks for being with us. It's an honor to have you. And right here, we have the participants of the Executive Symposium. I'm looking forward to an interesting discussion later with you. And not to forget, all around the room, all our amazing partners that make us successful around the world. Welcome to all of you. But this time, I want to give a special call out to a group of people. They are with our partners, they're with our customers, they're with Cisco. It's a group of people that make Cisco technology work. They are out there every day ensuring that we deliver the best results. Yes, I'm talking about our technical communities, all our SEs, the software developer, the administrators, the cybersecurity experts. And we put them here, some of them in the net wet corner, because they're doing it for a long time. It's a personal commitment. You put your career on Cisco. We really appreciate it. We will fight hard to deserve this every single day. But with all of you, it will be no problem to continue the journey. Nothing can stop us. We are ready. So let's go. So good to be back in EMEA in this region. And as you can see, I'm, I'm pretty excited. And there's a reason why I'm excited, because I have an advantage. I've been five 
years abroad, living in California, working for Cisco, running the global partner and routes to markets team. And I was talking to customers all around the world. And I also had a rather outside in to what is going on in Europe, in EMEA. And I can tell you, this world looks much better than we sometimes think, because it's not the same place as when I left it five years ago. The digital transformation is accelerating, no matter where we look. Let's start with the Middle East, where we see all these mega projects. Amazing how they drive this transformation, the speed, the power. We've never seen this before. But we can also go to the heart of Europe, to Madrid, where Real Madrid is currently building one of the best, if not the best, soccer stadium ever. Fully digitized, focused on the best fan experience, of course, supported by the full Cisco stack. And the next big thing is coming up soon. In Paris, Paris Olympics, and we are a proud sponsor, and we will help them to secure the games. But it's not only these big events, even everybody talks about them. It's what's happening in all industries, no matter where you look. All industries are driving the transformation, and we will hear from a lot of customers what is happening. We will hear from the consumer good industry from L'Oreal, how they are driving the changes. And we will hear from many manufacturing companies, down to critical infrastructure, railways, what is happening. And we have a great customer session with HSBC, where they will tell us how they drive application performance. And of course, there's one important group of customers, partners, and friends for a long time, our service providers, which are essential and key for driving this digital transformation. And you will hear from one of them called later, what are they doing? And there's one thing we should not forget, is all the great work that governments are doing across this region. We're working very closely with all of them, with our country digitization programs, to help them drive this digitization all across the countries we're in. It's clear technology is key to manage all this challenge. Without technology, we wouldn't be able to manage the challenges we're facing all around the world. But to be also very clear, technology itself is a driver of some of these disruptions. And yes, I'm talking about the biggest disruption ever, AI. You will hear a lot about AI. Not only how we can help you build the right infrastructure to run your own AI and to utilize the power in a secure way. We will also say, tell you how we are embedding more and more in AI in our products, which we're doing, by the way, for the last 10 to 12 years. But we will also talk about how we responsible utilize the power of AI. And if you want to learn more and understand why it's the biggest disruption ever, don't forget to join me tomorrow in my guest speaker note with Tom, where we talk about what you need to do and why this is the biggest disruption ever. Now, let's be clear. There is something happening when it comes to IT. There's an overall positive momentum in IT, because IT is the one that is changing everything, that is helping to achieve all these targets. It's no longer a cost center only, and the job from all these CIOs in the rooms has changed dramatically. Not only need to run the daily business, they need to help to drive the business. They need to help to survive all the surprises. And that's a good thing, because we're in a time where IT is key, it's a solution. I know the GDP growth for this region is about a percent for this fiscal year. Not big, but when you look at the ICT market, the predicted growth for the ICT market is four to five times bigger because companies even invest in times where they are struggling in their business, because they know they will only survive, and that's the learning, when they utilize the power of technology. I'm very optimistic, as you can see, and I'm bullish and positive for the future, but I'm not stupid. I see what is happening, especially in our region. We have two wars, conflicts, and a lot of innocent people are suffering. And there's more. No matter where you start, you can talk about energy costs, cost of living, global warming, instable political systems, and a deglobalization. But no matter what is happening, we have an opportunity with IT to help. And I'm very proud to see what a lot of you, our customers and partners, are doing to make this a more inclusive and a better place. So 
Let me get to the most important part of Cisco Life, which is talking about technology. We love technology. There's no question. It's all about technology for us. And being now more than 10 years with Cisco, approximately 20 years working with Cisco, and being an engineer, I can tell you, this is the best portfolio ever. It's more integrated. It's more open. It's more automated. It's more secure. And it's more AI-powered than ever before. Is it perfect? No, of course not. It will take some time to be perfect. It will never get there, of course. But that's why we're continuously driving innovation. You will see a lot of this today. And we will also continue to drive mergers and acquisitions. And the acquisitions that we did over the last year, I hope you remember the last big one about Splunk, will be game-changing for all of you. We will get to a level where we're getting stronger and stronger. And that's not all. We have on top all our partners that help us to implement the best solutions adapted to your local needs all around the world. When I'm talking with all of my customers around the world over the last year, I'm hearing always the same topics, what they ask me. It's more or less five to six things. It starts always, how can we upgrade the infrastructure? How can we make it ready for AI in the future world? Then I'm hearing about how we make it secure while we're upgrading it. And then again, focus on the application experience. How do we create the best application experience? What do I need to do to empower my users? And yes, the users are still living in a hybrid work. We will hear today how we empower and make it possible to work in this new world. And of course, something that started here in EMEA, we will talk about how we drive sustainability. And last but not least, the number one question, so while I'm doing all of this, how do I drive the transformation of the company? And that's the agenda of today. We will cover all these topics on the main stage and during all the breakouts. And we will start right away with my first guest speaker. Please welcome on stage the EVP and General Networker, Net, <laughs> General Manager for Networking. Please welcome on stage Jonathan Davidson. Thank you so much, Oliver. A great entrance. I like the walk again. That was fabulous. You know, so exciting to be back here today with all of you. And I just want to share with you, for years, digitalization has ignited our curiosity about productivity, inclusivity, and, of course, convenience. And now AI, as Oliver talked about, is fanning those flames and fueling all of our business growth. And Cisco is absolutely committed to taking digitalization and AI even further to help you realize your outcomes. You know, it's been more than 25 years since I made my first IP telephony call, but I still remember the amazement that it provoked in me. It was the beginning of a new era in communication, and I knew that I was part of something much bigger than myself. Now, I think many of you might have felt the same way with cloud over the past 10 years. And we all know that the network builds these transformational innovations. And in return, the network is transformed by these innovations. The cloud and the network are absolutely synonymous with each other. And I see the exact same thing with AI. There is no AI without the network. You know, it's like driving a Formula One race car. I'm sure all of you know a little bit about Formula One, maybe? All right, so somebody does, one person, that's amazing. You know, you are in control of something revolutionary as long as the car is not controlling you. You need a pit crew that can make split-second decisions for you. Cisco is your crew for AI. Think of us as watching the road ahead for you, you can drive while we give you insights to avoid threats and anything that is going to slow you down. To do this, we are simplifying and we are securing networking everywhere for everyone at every scale. That is the Cisco Networking Cloud. Cisco Networking Cloud is an integrated platform 
for on-premise and for cloud operating models. It lets you manage all of the Cisco networking assets and products from one place. Fragmented platforms converge. Swivel share operations are a thing of the past. Hidden threats are surfaced and eliminated. And the platform is powered by AI to simplify, secure, and scale your operations across the entire network infrastructure. Now, data makes all of this possible. And one thing I want to share with you is that Cisco is the internet data company. With visibility into more than one billion endpoints, one billion endpoints, Cisco's data set is orders of magnitude better than anyone else in this industry. Thousand Eyes is taking billions of measurements every single day across cloud, data centers, service providers, and of course, across enterprise networks where you have enabled that. It is able to detect critical issues and also brownout conditions so that you can understand the digital experience of your users, applications, and of your things. And most importantly, you can take action based upon that data. So let's look at Thousand Eyes in action for branch and for campus. It's giving you insights about remote users, their individual devices, and the local area network. And today, we are announcing Thousand Eyes integration with Cisco Secure Access. Can I get a, oh, got a woo from G2, that's great. All right, that is our Secure Services Edge solution. Now, security and IT have got one place to see the digital experience of employees anywhere. With Secure Access, you can immediately see issues across the endpoint, wireless service provider, and all of the applications. How many of you would like to know that your CIO is having issues before they do? Anyone? Nobody, that's great, that's amazing. Or how would you like to roll back a change automatically when Thousand Eyes sees a problem? Well, now you can do that. And that brings us down to the individual device with Thousand Eyes endpoint. You will see performance data and you will understand how you can look at any device and how that device impacts the applications and vice versa. And that is key for rapid issue resolution. No more scattered information or specialized agents. Thousand Eyes Endpoints puts you in control with deep visibility into specific system metrics. Now, we also have integrated Thousand Eyes into platforms that you already love, like Meraki Dashboard. All right. All you need to do is select active application monitoring. You then activate Thousand Eyes on your MX devices with a few clicks to have visibility into how the network is performing for users and for their applications. In fact, I did it myself just last week on my own home network. It was very, very easy. So let's say that a site is inaccessible. Meraki Dashboard can now show you why. Path visualization gives you a hop-by-hop -hop view of the network traffic between the MX device and the destination of that traffic. So take a look. Thousand Eyes found the problem causing that inaccessible site. Look at the red circles. User connections are timing out because a service provider network leading to the SaaS CRM application is dropping some traffic. Now, this is happening multiple hops away out of the control of IT. It is causing a brownout condition and it's owned by that third party. The enterprise network team was able to fix the issue by routing users around the issue to a different path. This kept the workplace connected, made for happy users, and saved IT literally hours of analysis. Only Thousand Eyes can give you this level of detail. We were able to highlight wireless networks, identify real-time issues across multiple domains, and go deep into third-party SaaS application performance. Next up is your journey to cloud management and monitoring of all your Cisco wired and wireless infrastructure. Our highest performing catalyst 
switching products are integrated into the Meraki dashboard to unify and to secure your experience and the end user experience. One example of simplicity, with one click, you could initiate a remote packet capture. Or you can now troubleshoot with CLI in the Meraki dashboard, and now you can see your iOS XE configuration changes over time, highlighting exactly what changed between each one of your configuration versions. You can even immediately apply, or you can schedule firmware upgrades directly from the dashboard in three clicks for a couple of switches or tens of thousands of switches. Now, if you haven't already started to manage your Catalyst infrastructure from the cloud, we have a simple, secure solution for you. The new Catalyst 9300M can be managed by the Meraki dashboard directly right out of the box. Starting this quarter, very excited to announce, you can now monitor your Catalyst 9800 wireless access points and controllers from the Meraki dashboard. I got a woo, that's good. Now, when you're able to see your whole access network, you can analyze and you can fix things so much faster than before. And one company on that journey is L'Oreal. You know, it is, L'Oreal has been a Cisco customer for so many, many years, and now they are embracing this platform approach and the Cisco networking cloud. And it is beautiful to see a 100-year-old company embracing technology to transform. Let's roll the video. So L'Oreal is the largest beauty company in the world today. IT is an enabler for L'Oreal because our target is to be the number one beauty tech company in the world. L'Oreal has its own research departments, factories, retail headquarters, and I am responsible for providing the connectivity and the networks in all of those locations. Where we started 20 odd years ago, you know, it was pretty complicated. Now, because of what we have been able to build and with the products that we've used, we tend to have high availability solutions. With the Cisco Meraki solution, we now talk of it as being a connectivity platform. That platform is not just the network Wi-Fi and the wide area network, but we have sensors and CCTV. The beauty for us is that because it's in the dashboard, I can turn off any device anywhere in Europe from the top of a bus going through London from my mobile phone. That's the power of having the dashboard and having the uh, app. It makes my life really simple. So when the business comes to us and asks us to set up a pop-up, in the past it would take us two to three months. Now it's very much plug and play. Automation is really, really important to us. At the very heart of that, you have the API, and the API is what enables us to automate things that we do. Patching three and a half thousand devices in three days is fantastic. Tell me any other device manufacturer you can do that with. Doing things quicker makes it much simpler and cheaper to do. The TCO of our legacy systems versus our uh, Cisco Meraki systems, we reckon is about half. If you look over a five year period, it costs us half to run exactly the same estate as it used to. I keep saying we do more with less. That's wonderful. So now L'Oreal is not the only company that sees new possibilities with this dramatic simplification. You might have heard of company like OpenAI. Well, both OpenAI and L'Oreal are rolling Meraki out through, across their entire enterprise infrastructure. Now we are redefining cloud-based secure connectivity for the branch and the campus by integrating the campus, the Catalyst SD-WAN and the Cisco Secure Access, our secure services edge solution. Now this works for branch internet, it also works for SaaS traffic. Now here, you will use the Catalyst SD-WAN manager to connect branches to the Cisco Secure Access across the SD-WAN fabric. Then you can simply apply your security policy and you're able to deploy it to branch sites. It is literally that easy. This enables you to rapidly deploy scalable, highly secure, SASE-based architectures with just a few clicks. You know, the role of IT is expanding beyond cybersecurity. 
Customers count on Wi-Fi enabled, AI capable Meraki cameras for physical security. One of these customers, a European rail operator, uses them to actually secure their own operations. Imagine you're a railway operator with thousands of cameras running 24 hours a day. You are generating millions of hours of footage every single week. But how do you make it meaningful? Sorting through the footage to isolate one person or event could take days. AI is able to solve this problem within seconds. We can use the Meraki vision portal to filter on objects like vehicles or people. We could even go deeper with color attributes, like find me the person in the red shirt. Now, the same customer also uses Meraki cameras to enable rail operations and rail op and safeguard restricted uniforms. And so if someone goes and enters into a prohibited designated area without the uniform, the AI security to that intrusion. This all happens without compromising individual privacy or using facial recognition. And with automatic video encryption and authenticated firmware, Meraki cameras are more secure against threats. But they are more than simply cameras. They are actually sensors that run machine learning models at the edge for applications beyond physical security. This is the power of AI computer vision integrated with the network, powered by the network, and improved by the network. I think there's a camera lover in the back over there. All right, with all the demand for AI-powered applications, how do you simplify, secure, and scale your data centers and protect the network resiliency? Ethernet. An open Ethernet infrastructure delivers fast, data transfers between all of your AI workloads. Large-scale Ethernet-based fabrics improve interoperability, job completion time, energy consumption, and improves customer choice. And with Silicon One, Nexus, and the Cisco 8000, Cisco is leading the industry in open Ethernet. We have proven this technology for hyperscalers and used Ethernet to deploy and scale AI as well into the enterprise. In fact, Cisco is the networker of choice for enterprise AI clusters. In a brand new Bloomberg survey, 66% of enterprises who use Ethernet for their AI infrastructure are Cisco customers. The next closest Ethernet competitor has 3%. Now, we are announcing that we're partnering with NVIDIA, as well as Nutanix, and others to extend this leadership position and assist all of you. We all know that NVIDIA is synonymous with AI and Cisco is the same with networking. And we're coming together on enterprise ethernet networking solutions. We are putting NVIDIA GPUs into Cisco servers and networking solutions so that you can design reliable, fast, scalable, sustainable architectures for AI workloads inside of your enterprise. And then, of course, we have our great partnership with Nutanix. Nutanix and Cisco have created a fully integrated and validated hyper-converged solution that includes compute, networking, and storage across data centers and clouds. Nutanix also offers NVIDIA GPU virtualization. All of this simplifies your infrastructure and enables faster application delivery. And we will strengthen this relationship even more by adding Nutanix licensing to our EA buying programs. The NVIDIA and Nutanix solutions are each wrapped up in a Cisco validated design. You all know Cisco validated designs are end-to-end -end reference architectures. They take the guesswork out of designing, deploying, and automating data centers to run efficient AI workloads that helps you save both time and money. With CVDs, you can also choose container management platforms like Red Hat and hypervisors like VMware or Nutanix. So that's the simplicity of our data center solutions, but what about scale? 
A large hyperscaler in the U.S. is in production today with Cisco's Ethernet network fabric for their AI workloads in their back-end networks. That's the complicated part. It gives them the power efficiency, it gives them the cost advantage, and programmability to enable them to compete better in AI. And Silicon One is at the heart of this network AI fabric. This hyperscaler deployed a training cluster with the configuration that you see here, and that is just the beginning. They plan to deploy this configuration in many, many, many more data centers. Now, if this large hyperscaler trusts Cisco to help them with their AI infrastructure, our solutions can work for any enterprise at any scale. All right, for networks that are connecting industries, economies, and governments, Cisco leads the way with the internet for the future. The internet for the future is the backbone of digital experiences. It's where Cisco stretches the boundaries of technology with secure networks that scale to zettabyte capacities and perform at terabits per second. Customers rely on these networks for five nines availability. For those of you, just a reminder, that's only five minutes of downtime per year. Our innovations are literally changing the DNA of the internet. Customers experience this as high performance, low cost, and significantly less internet, uh, eth uh, <laughs> energy usage. Take Colt, one of the largest providers in all of Europe, and Cisco is helping Colt and its customers lead in performance and in sustainability. So look at what happened when Colt deployed Silicon One and routed optical networking. Five nines of service availability with automation, sub 50 millisecond recovery time, and all of their customer services and up to a 97% power savings. That is humongous. And coming soon, Colt is actually gonna be calculating the power consumption and the carbon footprint of each one of their services based upon our Acedian solution. Acedian is able to offer end-to-end -end service visibility and insights with microsecond granularity. That makes it faster to launch and monetize SLA-backed services. And this is where automation, convergence, scalability, and infrastructure all come together to digitalize the entire world, and this is all accelerated by AI. The barrier to that promise is complexity, and we're solving that with the Cisco Networking Cloud. Complexity is also the ally of bad actors, and we're solving that with the Cisco Security Cloud. We all know what it's like to fight the bad actors, the dread of a potential threat, the panic upon intrusion, the frenzied race to undo any potential damage. What if we could dampen down that cycle of dread, panic, and frenzy? Threats are growing across everything that connects. If it is connected, it must be protected. And that unified approach is driving our strategy for the Cisco Networking Cloud and the Cisco Security Cloud. Together, they act as a force multiplier for simple, secure connectivity. And to talk more about that, I'd like to invite my friend G2 Patel, EVP and GM of Security and Collaboration up on the stage, G2. Hello everyone. How's everyone doing? Yeah, this is, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. You know, I, this is my first time to Cisco Live EMEA and what I was told was this is the most fun, loud, boisterous audience that I'm gonna ever encounter. Is that true or is that not true? Yeah. Okay. That, that, and, and is that side, is that true over there too? No, not really. <laughs> All right, whatever. Um, well, welcome everyone, and we're, we're gonna have a very, very um, jam-packed set of announcements, and we have some really exciting news to share with you. I'm gonna talk to you about security, uh, and this is one of the most important kind of initiatives that you see in the world right now, and making sure that the world is safe. And so what I thought I'd do is walk you through and start with how has this industry evolved over the course of the past 30 years or so? And if you think about the security industry over the past 30 years, it's largely evolved with innovation through patchwork. And what I mean by that is, every single time there's a new threat 
that emerged, what happened was there was a new vendor that created a product to go out and address that new threat. And consequently, what you've had is about 3,500 or so vendors in the market. Each one of those vendors has a different kind of set of policy engines. On average, most organizations have about 50 to 70 different pr products within their cybersecurity stack. And it's actually, frankly, untenable to go out and manage that level of complexity on an ongoing basis. So it's, it's no longer something that's feasible to continue down that path, right? And so um, what we are seeing is this kind of major shift that's happening in the industry right now of moving from a bunch of point solutions to integrated platforms. And about 18 months ago or so, we announced um, the, um, the introduction of an integrated platform in security called the Cisco Security Cloud. That was, uh, that largely was built to solve three key problems. One was how do you protect the user within the organization? How do you protect cloud and cloud infrastructure? And how do you protect against a breach that might happen and you know, very quickly detect a breach if it occurs, respond, remediate, and recover from that breach as fast as possible? And all of that was built on a core foundation of firewall. That's what we kind of announced 18 months ago, and the team's been really busy innovating in this area. And so let's talk about what we've actually delivered to the market. So let's start with user protection. And what have we done in this area of user protection? So one of the big challenges that you see in user protection is if you think about a typical knowledge worker that wants to go out and um, you know, connect to any kind of application so they can get the job done, it's extremely uh, complicated for that, that individual to go out and just log into any application because every single type of application that you log into, you as a user need to know how you're going to specifically make sure that you connect to that application. So if you happen to connect to a um, you know, private application in your private data center, you're going to have to have a certain way of connecting to it. If you need to connect to an application that's a SaaS application, there's a different way to connect to it. So you might have you know, ZTNA is one mode of communication or connection. There might be VPN as another mode of, of connection. And it creates a tremendous amount of cognitive lo load for the end user as you just go out and try to get your basic job done, right? And we felt like there's, there's a better way that we should actually be functioning as an organization. So imagine if it was as simple as you authenticate to the system and you get to work. You don't have to do a whole lot else. And that's essentially what we built in this secure access application that um, Jonathan was talking about that we've integrated completely with Thousand Eyes as well. And the key over here is to make sure that we take care of the plumbing behind the scenes and all we need to do is assure that you can, make, you, you can have the same experience to go and connect to any application that you might have, private or public, whether you're a contractor or an employee, whether you happen to be at home or at work, it's exactly the same experience, right? And so that's what we wanted to do. Um, authenticate, get to work, we handle the plumbing behind the scenes. And what we wanted to do as we built this was deliver this kind of notion of zero trust with zero friction. And what is zero trust? Zero trust basically says provide the least privileged access Provide only the amount of rights that you need to provide to someone so that they can get the job done, rather than giving them the entirety of access for everything. Overprivileged access is something that's a huge challenge for most organizations right now. So that essentially is what we've actually built with the user protection side. There's a tremendous amount of detail. Make sure that you go out and see the demos that might be there and uh, that are gonna be there at the, at the booth and the show floor. But it's zero trust with zero friction. Now let's jump to cloud protection. What do you do in cloud protection? The same notion of zero trust that's used for users connecting to applications, we wanted to make sure that we, we had for applications talking to applications in the data center. So what we did was we said, well, let's go out and really look at what's happening right now in the market. And right now what you're seeing is a tremendous amount of applications have actually started moving to the cloud, whether it be an AWS or GCP or Azure. And it turns out that 95% of the applications that happen to be in the cloud need to access some sort of resource in your private data center. 
So imagine if you happen to be a marketing application, you still need to go out and access a customer database that might be in your private data center. Now, how does this happen today? The way that most people do it is they actually punch a hole to the firewall, right? And once you've punched a hole to the firewall, you can then have that application that's running on AWS connect to an application that happens to be in your private data center. Here's the downside, though. When it connects to that customer database, it also gets access to every other application in that private data center. So it's no longer zero trust. And why is that? Because typically what happens is on one side, you're talking IP address, right? When you, when you think about um, the language that's used in a private data center, it's largely around IP address. When you're talking an application that's moved into the cloud, what's the language you're talking over there? There's no IP address. There's no IP address for Redshift. There's no IP address for Lambda. It's just a service, right? And those don't talk well to each other. So what we've done is we've said, what if we provided a translation layer for both of those? So that when that marketing application wanted to connect to the customer database, we will actually create a trusted zero trust connection for that marketing application to connect to that customer database, but only the customer database, not anything else. And that'll work with any of the firewalls in the industry. So if you happen to have standardized on um, a competitive firewall, not Cisco's firewall, that's okay because we'll work with those as well because we want to make sure that we are an open, integrated platform. Right? And so that's, what, that's basically what we've done. Now the great part about this is as you have these applications, that move from one cloud to the other. Let's say that you started on AWS, but you wanted to make sure that you had a multi-cloud architecture, you wanted to move it to uh, Azure or GCP. We can persist that policy as you move from one cloud to the other. So that's essentially what we've done with cloud protection. Now let's talk about breach protection. What have we done on the breach protection side? And by the way, all of these are capabilities available in market, in the product today, right? So breach protection, what do we do with breach protection? Well, one of the things that we found was 80% of breaches and attacks that happen in an organization start from email. There's some kind of funny looking email that you get from an exotic prince from an exotic country that says, click on this link, download your $10 million. It's burning a hole in our pocket, we want to give it to you. You click on that link, it takes you to a website that didn't exist two hours ago. That then downloads some malware on your device and kickstarts a process, and before you know it, there's lateral movement within your organization. That's how 80% of, um, uh, of the breaches actually happen. Now, the challenges in this entire um, you know, domain as I, as I talked about earlier, there's 3,500 vendors. There are vendors that do a really good job protecting email. There are other companies that do a really good job protecting the web. Really um, good, good companies that protect endpoint and the network. And what you see is there's a complete segment, uh, kind of, you know, isolation of telemetry because what you see in email isn't correlated what's happening on the web. And so what we wanted to do is say, can we correlate this telemetry to get better intelligence? Right? And so how does that work? So what we did was we said if we actually have the benefit of having knowledge of every email and every forward, of every request that happens in the web, of every process that gets initiated on your client, and of every packet that flows through the network, through NetFlow data, wouldn't it be great if we could correlate all of these? So a low-level alert that you might have ignored on an email with a low-level alert that you might have ignored on a website with a low-level alert that you might have ignored because there was some process that got kickstarted, when you combine them together, actually translates to a high-level alert that you shouldn't be ignoring. And so that's what we did when we actually launched XDR. And this is, by the way, the team's done a fantastic job in this product. Um, they, they launched it a few months ago. We've already had a tremendous amount of momentum with a lot of customers using it. Um, and make sure that you go see the demo again. But what we did was we said, let's not stop there. Because detection is great and response is great, but what you want to do is go a step further and say, what do you need to do to make sure that you have some kind of a vaccination against ransomware? You want to make sure that if something happens and if you are ransomed, you can revert back to where you used to be. 
right? And so we launched XDR Plus Recovery with partnership with some of our client, uh, with, with, with some of our partners like Cohesity. Let me show you how this works. This is actually really cool. All right, so this is how it works. Let's say that you have a suspicious process um, in, um, um, that's actually starting. Now, by the way, you don't know if it's known good or known bad, because those are pretty easy to address, right? If it's known good, let it go through. If it's known bad as a process, block it. The problem comes in is when it's sitting right in that gray area. What do you do with that? So if you have a suspicious process that you're not, not sure if it's, it's, it's sitting in the gray area, what we do now is we can actually immediately take a snapshot of your environment. We're not sure if it's good or bad, so we're just going to take a snapshot. And then let's assume that this thing, in fact, actually ended up being a piece of malware um, that's going out and infiltrating your environment. The moment that's starting to happen, we can actually revert back and go back to a near instantaneous recovery from the snapshot that we've taken, because snapshots are almost free to take at this point in time. They're so, in, they're so inexpe in, in, inexpensive that we're able to actually recover back to an RPO of zero. So what does that exactly you know, kind of mean, and what, what, what do you actually end up doing with this? The beauty about this is um, you, you're able to get a completely um, you know, kind of uh, clear way of making sure that if there is a ransomware attack that happened in your, your organization, you're able to recover from that and have a vaccination so that you can go back to exactly where the thing had actually taken over your environment, right? And that's all happening through AI. Now, as many of you think about XDR, many of you might be thinking, well, what about Splunk and how does Splunk play into this as well? Well, the beauty is Splunk has the log data in their SIM system. We have XDR data, plus Splunk has um, you know, SOAR data, which is basically or orchestrating and automating an environment, and then you've got user behavior analytics. And with, with Splunk, we actually pull all of these into a single platform. So it's actually, uh, you know, we can't talk much more about this because um, we are still in the regulatory process but expect a lot of innovation between these two things coming together so that you can be safer as an organization because you can use that data and make sure that you actually are able to take the right level of um, response and remediation against an attack that might, might, might occur within your organization. Now, as we talk about all this and as Jonathan went through what we're doing with AI infrastructure, we also wanted to make sure that we're innovating in every layer of AI. And so what we've done in security is we've made AI pervasive throughout the entirety of the platform. And this is super cool, and I'll show you um, what we're doing with the demo over here in, in, a, in a moment. But basically what we're doing is we're saying there's three things we can do with AI in security. One is we're going to make sure that every person who's managing a security infrastructure has an assistant, a sidekick, someone who can actually help them um, in making sure that their job is easier. So the first thing that we do is assist. The second area is around augmenting data with, with the human in the loop. And then the third one is fully automating certain tasks as well. Right? And so let's talk about what we're doing over here. But the, what, what we did was we have actually now launched a security-based assistant, and we are calling it the Cisco AI Assistant for Security. It's not a multiple set of different assistants. It's one assistant that spans all of our security portfolio for the security cloud, right? And so let me show you a demo of what this looks like. This is super cool. You ready? Yeah? This is a very quiet crowd. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. This is, a this is a cool demo. I, I, I promise you're going to like it. All right. So... Imagine if you had an interface like this, which is just like ChatGPT, but for your security environment. And it's going to ask you, it's basically a prompt interface where you can just make sure you enter a prompt. So you can just, in natural language, enter a prompt that says, I need to update my firewall policy. What policies are controlling my sales application? Right? You enter that in, and immediately what you're going to get back is a list of, here are the policies controlling access to that sales application. 
Remember, this is, um, we've actually done this in a completely multimodal way. So you actually enter a natural language query and you get back this beautiful kind of table um, and, and, um, and it's a rich media interface, you know, kind of back and forth. Now, what you do is you say, all right, fine, that's great. Add a rule to application access that blocks outbound traffic from the sales app. And when you do that, it automatically gives you a suggestion of what that rule would look like. So I'm setting a rule within my firewall through a natural language interface um, you know, in, um, in, in real time, and it can, it, it'll, it'll actually go out and tell you what the rule is, and it'll ask you whether you want to go out and implement this rule. You hit, you hit yes, and voila, you've actually gone out and made sure that that, that rule of blocking outbound traffic from the sales app has been, has been implemented right away, right? Now, what if you say, give me a step-by-step -step set of instructions on how to upgrade my firewall? Because I don't know how to go out and upgrade the firewall. What it'll do is it'll give you a full step-by-step -step set of instructions. And so what we've done is we've trained the machine learning model to say, what are the most common tasks that people do as a firewall administrator and make sure that all of those are made available to you through natural language interfaces. How cool is that? Is that cool or what? It's amazing, this is great. But we're not done though, we're not done. So then we can say, all right, this is great, but I have a notification and that notification is around some kind of policy analysis and optimization that I'm doing. So the AI agent uh, assistant is smart enough to say, hey, look, you've got about um, 12,034 rules, but 353 of those rules are duplicate rules. So what do you want to do with those rules? Do you want to delete the duplicate rules? Do you want to disable those duplicate rules? And so the system is providing you a reasoning engine, and it's allowing you to make sure that not only are you going out and setting a policy, it allows you to do ongoing hygiene on the policies that you might have that you weren't able to do before. Right? You go ahead and say yes, go ahead and disable those rules or delete them, and it goes ahead and deletes those rules. This, by the way, is available in the product today. Right? Yeah, that's great. But we didn't want to stop there either. We said, let's keep going. So what we've got is a bunch of new innovations in AI <clears throat> that we're announcing today as well, in addition to that. Number one, We'll make sure that we can also secure AI. One of the big things that a lot of organizations are afraid about is my, my data, I want to make sure that when it does go out um, into, um, um, into um, an AI model, how do I protect it so that the wrong data doesn't go out? So we have securing AI uh, with intellectual property protection. That's going to be ma made sure it's part of secure access. That's available today. What we also have is advanced AI for email threat detection. So you can detect patterns in email with advanced AI. That's also going to be the, as part of our email, th uh, email threat detection. And we have AI Assistant for, secure, uh, for Cisco Secure Access. Just like you saw with Firewall, that same assistant is now also going to be able to allow you to go out and set policies for your SASE product and your SSE product through an AI Assistant, right? And this is what it's going to look like. It's that same you know, kind of icon, wherever it shows up, there's an AI assistant. It's embedded across all of our products. All right. So that's essentially what we think about when we think of a Cisco Security Cloud. But basically, what you have is a Cisco Security Cloud that's embedded with AI everywhere that you go. It's in the fabric of the Cisco Security Cloud. But there's one other big problem that we wanted to make sure that we solved for, which was what typically is the biggest attack vector that you're seeing right now where a lot of breaches are happening? The new attack vector that we're seeing is around identity. And identity, you know, a lot of people say identity is the new perimeter. In fact, 74% of the attacks that are happening involve a human element, and there's some, some kind of social engineering that, um, that's actually part of that entire kind of process. So let's see how this works, because Typically what ends up happening is these adversaries, the threat actors are saying, hey, why do I need to hack in if I can just steal someone's credentials and simply log in? It's a whole lot easier to do that. So <clears throat> let's see how this works. Typically what you'd have 
is some kind of a social engineering attack where someone would say, I'm going to go out and impersonate a voice through some deep fake and voice cloning and call a help desk and make sure that when I've called the help desk, I've had them essentially reset my MFA password. By the way, there is a few high-profile breaches that happened recently that happened in a very similar fashion, right? And then what you'll see is you added a new device with that MFA password reset that happened, and then all of a sudden, access was granted, um, and then the, everyone, the, the person got unhindered access into your system. And now they can do whatever they want to do in the system because they've actually gone in. So the question that we've all been asking as we've gone through this entire, um, you know, kind of past three decades with identity is, can someone, does G2 Patel have the ability to log into this application? Let's go verify that, typically at the point of time of authentication. Once you authenticate, you're in, you're free to do whatever you want. And I think it's the wrong question to be asking. The question should be, should that person have access, and can we assess based on context and behavior if that person should be continually granted access? It should be a continuous kind of assessment that's happening. And rather than can they do it, we should find out whether or not they should be doing it based on the behavior that they're exuding, right? And so what we need to do is fundamentally reimagine identity-based trust. This is an area there's a huge amount of innovation possibility. And so I'm delighted to announce Cisco Identity Intelligence being launched today here in EMEA, in Amsterdam. Right? <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about what this does. So firstly, Cisco Identity Intelligence is going to be completely open. It's going to work with any identity provider that you might have. We don't need to replace any of them. It's going to actually cover the span of not just human identity, but also machine and service identity. And it's going to be behavior aware. So at the moment you start seeing odd behavior, we're going to make sure that we can intercept. So here's how it works. This is a very typical environment that most organizations would have. They'd have Active Directory, they've got some Okta, they've got some Ping Identity, they've got CrowdStrike, they've got Cisco Identity for Identity Services Engine. You're going to have a lot of these kind of identity um, uh, you know, kind of providers within your organization. What we've done with Cisco Identity Intelligence is you provide a thin layer of analytics on top of all of those identity providers. And you take all of those identity providers and utilize that data in that identity intelligence layer. And what we do is we create an identity graph. Now what does this identity graph do? It essentially allows you to correlate data from humans or users and devices and applications and correlate how they all kind of behave with one another. So let's take an example of how this works. In this identity graph, the first example is, let's say that you wanted to continually assess someone's behavior, right? And so is, is G2 doing the things that G2 is supposed to do so we can make sure that we give him access on a continued basis? So if I logged in, I would have a user ID, I'd have a certain location, I'd have a role that I'm playing, and then what you would do is, immediately, let's say if G2 got <clears throat> uh, added to the database administrators group, yeah, it's, it's a little odd, but not worth actually going out and stopping anything from happening. He just got added to the database administrators group. But now, all of a sudden, I'm starting to show really peculiar behavior because I'm starting to go out and log into an Oracle customer database and start downloading records or deleting records. What do I do? This is when the identity graph com com comes in and says, okay, I can actually have a graduated response. That seems like anomalous behavior, so I'm gonna make sure that we can kill that session. Right? Now, this isn't just something that we do from a um, um, reactive perspective, but I'm trying to do something wrong. What about the proactive side? Well, I've got a bunch of laptops um, that I've actually had. Maybe, maybe like I've got a bunch of devices that I've had. I've stopped using some of them because I've got new devices. Well, wouldn't it be nice if I can decommission those legacy devices and not have them always turned on? 
the identity graph can tell you which devices have been um, dormant and not being utilized and actually automatically to give you an idea for decommissioning them. Third example, what happens if you actually want to eliminate outdated permissions? Right? Let's say that you actually had some kind of a proof of concept that you were doing with Zendesk. And to test out Zendesk, you actually created a connection between Zendesk and Salesforce. And then people just forgot about it. They moved on. What the graph will be able to do is tell you, well, this connection is not being utilized. It's outdated. Let's take away the permissions from it. That's the power of the identity graph, and that's the power of actually providing the Cisco identity intelligence layer. And the beauty about this is we're going to make it available all throughout Cisco Security Cloud. Now, my ask of you <clears throat> is to make sure that you can take a Cisco identity security assessment, which we actually provide to all of you for free. And what that'll allow you to do is it'll tell you when MFA is not being used properly, if identity hygiene is not being practiced in the right way within your organization, and we'll give you a report. This is something if you're interested in, make sure you talk to your account rep. You'll actually be able to go out and take this identity security assessment so that you can actually be safer because you'll know exactly where the holes are in your system, which aren't vulnerabilities. Those are just holes in your system that someone can log in with if they were able to go out and intercept. Right? And so what have we done here? What we've done is basically had an AI-powered Cisco Security Cloud platform. And we think identity is so important and such a huge threat vector for the future that we've embedded that all into Cisco Security Cloud. So if you happen to buy a user protection suite, guess what? Identity intelligence is included. If you buy the breach protection suite, identity intelligence is included. And the beauty is, if you're not buying the suites, and let's say you're buying individual applications, you're buying Duo, you're buying Cisco Secure Access, we will make sure that identity intelligence is also included in one of the tiers in those products that are going to be made available. Right? And, so, and you will be able to work with any of the identity providers that you currently have. You don't have to extract anything. You just get this added layer of intelligence that helps you prevent against identity thefts, which is actually one of the largest concerns that people have. So folks, that's identity intelligence. Thank you. Thank you. So Jonathan talked about how we're going to be a great networking company. You can't be a great networking company if you're also not a great security company. And so hopefully what you saw over here is we can be a great security company because of all of this capability now that's starting to get built in. And the team has hyper-innovated. And by the way, truth be told, I think we had not innovated for a while. There was, a, there was several years where our innovation velocity had gone down, and that is no longer the case. We're, in 2023, we, we innovated more than we had the 10 years prior. And I think you're going to see an order of magnitude multiple in 2024 compared to 2023. I'm really proud of the team, and what I want to talk about next is invite my good friend Ronak so that he can come and talk about observability. Ronak, come on up. All right. Thank you very much, G2, and I'm going to continue this AI thread and show you how we are using AI as part of the observability. You know, at Cisco, for full stack observability, we're bringing the network insight, security insights, and application intelligence all together to help you deliver that flawless and secure digital experience for everyone, every time. One year ago, we stood here in front of you and laid out our full stack observability strategy. And I'm so happy and proud of our team who's helped us deliver every solution and use case which we talked about. You know digital experience has become a key boardroom metric. Cisco App Dynamics and Cisco Observability Platform is helping you achieve your observability goal. As part of my role, I meet a lot of you. And you told me loud and clear 
that you want a unified and a simple observability experience. In fact, you told me that you have many, many monitoring tools. Somewhere between 10 to 140 monitoring tools. Clearly, this is causing high total cost of ownership, causing frictions amongst your ops teams, but more importantly, it's delaying your resolution and time to detect. So our use case driven approach for full stack observability is really resonating with our customers, as you can see. The way we do that is by unifying the data, hence reducing the frictions between your ops teams, improving the operational efficiency, at the same time reducing the business risk. And in fact, Gartner agrees with us. They recognize us as customer's choice, peer insight for observability in 2023. We talked about a lot of use cases. And when I see the demo of that, it just gives me a pure joy and opportunity for you all to see that live on the show floor. But here are the four use cases which I really want to kind of spend time today. The first one is around SAP monitoring. You all know SAP users really want to understand bottleneck into their SAP transactions. They want to be predictive and proactive, and more importantly, they want to do a quick root cause analysis so that they can avoid the outages. You know one minute of outage on SAP landscape can cost you tens of thousands of dollars. So just think about it, few hours of outage, what it can do to your brand and yourself. So let us help you reduce that pain. The second use case is around business risk observability. You know security risk assessments are top of the mind for our security ops, IT ops, and application team. And I'm very happy to announce extension to our business risk observability with DSPM observability, which is data security posture management observability. This is helping you detect, discover, analyze, and quickly take action to protect your data and protect your brown. The third use case is around digital experience monitoring. To deliver that flawless digital experience, you really need to understand every component your application depends upon. And we at Cisco have a unique advantage where we can provide you that end-to-end -end holistic understanding of that application dependency. By ingesting network insight from Thousand Eyes and private insight from Exceedians, we are able to give you those critical vantage points, allowing you that visibility and insight to help you deliver that flawless digital experience. And I'm very happy to announce we are extending the digital experience monitoring by adding session replay as part of that. And it is going GA this week. It's like Netflix. You have access to millions of users who are accessing your application. But we have simplified by building in analytics so that we can quickly narrow down the problematic sessions and it is that simple. Please do go experience that for yourself on the demo floor. You, we know pressure on you and your IT team is higher than ever. So this week, Cisco AI Ops is going live. This is providing you actionable insights to help you improve your IT operation, reducing your mean time to detect and repair. By focusing on correlated faults and insight, we're helping you and your team to streamline the incident management and change management. You ask for it, and we are delivering it. Monitoring LLM usage by your applications from a cost perspective and an API perspective is already available. And we are adding natural language interface on our query language. This is like interacting in a human natural language with our tools. And I'm very happy to announce that we are going to add autonomous root cause analysis with Cisco AI Assistant for observability. 
Cisco Observability Platform is unique from a perspective of it's open, it's API driven, and it's extensible. And it's that power of extensibility which allows our partner to do the rapid innovation on this platform. And I'm happy to announce eight new partner modules, starting from Business Insight, MLOps, to SLO. Just to put it in a perspective, our partners have delivered 24 modules since the time this platform went GA. That's a module a week. And this rapid pace of innovation is possible because of the power of platform. You heard a lot from me. And I know observability is the top of the mind for you all. So I want to welcome to the stage Petak, Managing Director at HSBC. She's got a great vision for full stack observability, and she has benefited by our partnership and some of the solutions which we are talking about it. So welcome, Patek, to the stage. Patek, thank you very much for joining us here. Thank you. Thanks so, for having me. Patek, recently your CEO publicly shared that a key part of HSBC's strategy is to invest in digitization and technology. This is a huge opportunity and also a big challenge. What is it, how does this represent for you and your teams? First of all, thanks for having me here, Ronak. Indeed, at HSBC, we're really embracing the digital world. As people are leading increasingly digital lives, we are putting the full power of our bank in every customer's pocket with easier and more secure digital banking. In simple terms, we're putting our bank in your pocket. Vision 27 uh, is our long-term technology strategy. It's helping to transform HSBC to, into a digital first bank. While we are demising legacy and non-strategic applications, as part of our efforts to really streamline what is a very large and complex technology architecture. Now, digitize at scale with growing dependency on third-party services means increasing complexity in our environments. But it also means increasing number of changes that is delivered into our production network. Only last year, we delivered more than 800,000 changes. That is 19% up from the previous year. And if we continue with this trend, we, I think, can comfortably say that we can easily exit the one million mark this year. So, Ronak, as we are transforming HSBC into a digital bank at pace, we at tech in technology, what we must really do is have a very sharp focus in protecting our production. And that is only possible by uplifting our technology resilience, which also includes investing in observability and AI ops. Oh? That's not me. Yeah. We know the bank's role in this global economy. Yeah. So security and uptime, I'm sure, is not negotiable. So what does technology resilience mean to HSBC? How do you approach it specifically in context of observability? You're absolutely spot on. Resilience is not negotiable. So as a bank, our license to operate very much rests on trust. Trust of our customers, trust of our staff, trust of our regulators and public as a whole. And I assure you, we take this responsibility very, very seriously. And that is why we are taking a very proactive approach to technology resilience. At HSBC, as part of our Vision 27 technology strategy, we developed a very powerful and very unique tool for our industry. This is a self-assessment tool called Technology Resilience Maturity Framework, TRMF for short. We use TRMF to assess and categorize our resiliency maturity levels across our technology stack, as well as our third party partners. And we use this to determine our resiliency uplift requirements. Now, what is really cool about this tool and very great for our colleagues is it provides a common language between the business and the technology colleagues so that they actually have a common language they can understand. And they also use this to make priority calls for the 
investments they make in order to uplift our resilience. Now, TRMF uses multiple types of criteria, as you can imagine, it's quite a, a comprehensive capability, but it includes criteria around observability. It is observability that is important because, as you were pointing out earlier as well, is that observability gives us a way to identify anomalies, uh, identify probably previously unknown faults or problem areas. It allows us to proactively uh, prevent incidents, if not detect and restore incidents much faster. But also it gives us the insights to much better, more accurate ways to identify root causes for any incidents as well. So in business terms for HSBC, what does this consistent and unified approach to observability mean to you, your teams, and to all our customers here? Yes. So first of all, observability must ensure the technology teams are more aligned and more focused on customer outcomes. Therefore, it should really closely tied into the service-defined service level objectives. Now, over many years, we have made significant progress uh, uplifting our monitoring, alerting, and logging capabilities by introduction of tools like AppDynamics, Thousand Eyes, Splunk, and many other. Of course, this helped us to deal with the complexity of the environment uh, to some extent. But what we're focusing on right now is to really build this end-to-end -end unified observability as you said earlier, across all components within an IT service chain so that we have a better visibility to the health state of our important business services. And we aim to do this consistently across technology globally. We also are looking to integrate uh, observability capabilities with our TRMF tool because that will give us a live view of our resiliency posture which will, of course, strengthen our approach to risk management across the bank. Thank you very much, Patek. And I know we can spend an hour talking about it, but don't worry. We're going to spend more time at noon in my iTalk between Patek and I. There's a QR code up here to see the announcements which we're making it this week. Uh, but to uh, talk about hybrid work, I want to welcome my dear friend Jitu Patel on the stage. Thank you very much. All right, you thought you'd get rid of me. You're not getting rid of me that easy. So we're going to talk about two more very important board initiatives. One of them is fundamentally around hybrid work. How are people working? What's the future of work going to look like? And the second is around customer experience. How do we make sure that we fundamentally create better brand loyalty when a customer has an issue with the brand that they're engaging with? So let's start with um, you know, talking about hybrid work and then you know, there's two specific areas <clears throat> in hybrid work that we actually are focused on. One is fundamentally reimagining workspaces. People work from everywhere. We need to make sure that we actually reimagine the workspaces and how they're going to use that, that property in the way today compared to the way that they used to use it 10 years ago. Um, and one of the key areas that's actually fascinating is 98% of meetings that you'll see in the future will have at least one participant that's going to be not in the same physical location as everyone else. 98% of the meetings, right? But only a third of the conference rooms in the world are actually video enabled. And so as we thought about this, we said, what do we do? One of the things that we wanted to do was fundamentally take away the distance between two parties when they're not in the same physical space as everyone else, right? And so this notion of distance zero is a big kind of principle for us as we think about innovating in this new world of hybrid work. And so how do you get to distance zero? What are the things that we do? Well, one of the things that we're doing is it's not just about putting a video and a screen on every room. It's actually much more than that. We have to fundamentally make sure that we architect the room in such a way that it takes away the distance. And so we've provided blueprints for every different kind of room to our customers, whether it be a boardroom, huddle space, theater style rooms, conference rooms, to make sure that there's a level of distance that can be taken away and people feel like they're immersed and right there with each other. In fact, one of the most magical things that we've actually seen happen at Cisco uh, and with a lot of our customers is sometimes you don't even remember if you've met someone in person or not. 
because the distance is taken away in the way in which you engage with them. And the way that this happens is we've actually got a complete portfolio of devices that we've built for every single space that, um, that we want to equip with this kind of notion of distance zero. And there's a couple things that have really been fascinating as we've innovated in the devices because we completely changed our mindset a few years ago where we said, well, rather than just having devices that work with only the WebEx platform, why don't we have devices that work with any platform that customers are using? And so we have completely opened up our devices so that you can actually have it work with Zoom, you can have it work with Google, and we've actually made a special partnership with Microsoft, where Microsoft Team Rooms can run natively on our devices. And when Microsoft Team Rooms runs natively on our devices, WebEx can be another application that runs there. So that's the first big change that we've had, which is you've made, we've made sure that we made it open. The second big change was a decision that we made about five or six years ago, which was around making sure that every one of our devices would have an NVIDIA chipset in it so that we could actually pack it with capabilities for AI. And now, that's actually really proving out to be extremely valuable because we have AI capabilities that are not just in our devices, but those capabilities for AI can make every other platform that integrates with our devices better. So if you actually use Microsoft Teams, they will get benefit of noise removal and noise cancellation and video intelligence because that's something that's baked into the devices. Now, it's not just about collaboration and hybrid work. We want to make sure that we actually take the power of the entirety of the portfolio of Cisco. So what we also have is this ability to deliver workspace optimization through Cisco Spaces. And they can take telemetry from Meraki um, Wi-Fi access points and um, uh, IoT devices and all of those pieces and give you a schematic of exactly what your space looks like what spaces are available, and it also takes the telemetry from the devices, right? And so that's reimagining workspaces themselves. Everything from how you kind of walk into a space to how you actually might engage with people when you're in the space. We also wanted to make sure that we fundamentally reimagine work. And when you think about reimagining work, one of the things we wanted to do was make sure that everything that we had had a similar kind of experience and was built on a common platform. So a few years ago, the WebEx platform actually delivered the WebEx suite, which includes calling, messaging, meetings, polling, Q&A, events, whiteboarding, async video, all of those things for the price less than the cost of Netflix, right? And you have that capability with a single platform where you actually make the innovation once and it's actually available in every single application that we have in the platform. And it all looks and feels the same. It's all fully integrated. It's a gorgeous UI. And so that's something that we've actually worked really hard and it was completely secure. Now, this mentality of making sure that we have something that's frictionless as an experience, honoring people's privacy, and keeping organizations safe is a core principle that not only do we care a lot about and our customers care a lot about, but there's another partner that actually shares those same values just as much as we do. And that's Apple, right? And so Apple and Cisco together um, are fundamentally better together. And so what we've done is we've said, how can we make sure that we continue to keep working closely with Apple, everything from the way in which our network integrated with Apple to um, what we've done with our mobile devices and so on and so forth. But then there was this kind of magical moment that happened earlier this year where they launched, I think, one of the most consequential devices of our times, and that's the Apple Vision Pro. And let's take a look at what we've done with that. Enter the era of spatial computing, WebEx for Apple Vision Pro, where every space is your favorite workspace with an infinite canvas that lets you drag and drop as you collaborate, leveraging industry-leading features like real-time translation and AI noise removal in a whole new experience. This is WebEx for Apple Vision Pro. Available in the App Store today. 
right? And the beauty about this is it's also a featured app. We're so excited to work with Apple. In fact, we have some of our friends from Apple that are here. Thank you for the partnership. And um, just know that we will continue to keep investing in the partnership and we will continue to keep investing in building amazing products that actually have privacy at the front and center, security at the front and center, and a beautiful experience that you just feel like um, you've completely immersed into it. So that's um, Apple. Now, how do you also make sure that you don't just reimagine workspaces and work, but also customer experience? And for imagining customer experience, one of the things we did was we said, let's utilize that same platform that we've used for video and audio um, for WebEx and make sure that we can have a world-class customer experience set of applications built on top of that. Right? And so with that core WebEx platform, what we've done is we've delivered a great way that you can not only do customer experience where when someone calls, you have the right kind of software to go out and give them a great experience, but we start with proactive communications. But sometimes the customer shouldn't even have to call because something's gone wrong and you as a brand can proactively make sure that you take care of that customer. We also want to make sure that we can provide <clears throat> every customer the ability to self-serve if they wanted to. But there is such a thing as wanting to have the desire to talk to a human from time to time. And when they do, we want to make sure that you don't have to keep repeating yourself you don't have to keep feeling frustrated, and you can actually talk to that human and get your problem solved as easily as possible. And you might start that communication with that brand on a website in chat, and then you might decide to jump on a voice call, and we will actually keep complete context of that. And all of those multiple channels, whether it be WhatsApp or websites or Instagram, uh, or a telephone call or a video call will all actually maintain context and so that you don't have to repeat yourself over and over again, right? And the beauty about this is we've actually made these solutions available for everyone. So we used to have um, a, a standard and premium version which was a feature-rich contact center and then recently we announced a contact center basic so that you could actually have smaller, more tactical teams that might not need a very heavy-duty contact center also be able to benefit from it. And that's included in the WebEx suite, right? And so in the WebEx suite, when you buy the WebEx suite, you'll actually get the basic contact center. So you might have multi-line communication, or you might, you, you might have a, a, a few set of features that even your IT help desk or your HR ticketing system might actually need from time to time when there's a surge. And so that's, that's available. And then what we've done is we've said, let's take it a step further. And so what we're announcing over here is the essentials version, which is actually something that's going to be made available for a much lower price than the full-fledged standard version for $30 um, you know, per user per month. And what that's going to have is the ability for having any individual within your organization that can actually participate in helping solve problems for customers, not just the contact center agents. And so you have a lower price point and you're able to go out and get there. And all of this is built on a core fabric of AI. And AI is as, just like what you saw in security, AI is pervasive throughout the entirety of the platform. And so what we did was we said, let's make sure that we have, once again, a unified AI assistant for all of the properties of WebEx, right? And so, whether it be the WebEx suite, or it be Cisco devices, or WebEx control hub for going out and administering and managing your console, um, you will have a single AI assistant. And essentially, that AI assistant is going to be called the Cisco AI assistant for the WebEx suite. Let me show you a quick demo that's going to blow your mind. This is very cool. All right, so the scenario over here is I'm sitting in a meeting, and all of a sudden the doorbell rings because I buy a lot of crap online at night, right? And so doorbell rings, and I have to make sure that I get up. So Clarissa is like me, so she gets up. The system automatically knows Clarissa stepped away. She blurs the camera, and she's, um, you know, um, it's, um, and she, people have detected she's gone, she's gone away. The moment she comes back, she's going to be asked, hey, do you want to catch up on the three minutes of the conversation that you missed 
so it can recap that conversation for you from the time that you stepped away to the time that you came back so that you don't have to go out and distract anyone else in the meeting. How cool is that? Right? And the same summarization capability is also available on our messaging platform. It's also available in Vidcast and in the entire, entirety of the suite. The beauty about this is when you get a transcript at the end of the summary, you will even know in the transcript on what transpired besides just the, um, um, just the script. So you might see the transcript, but the transcript will have Clarissa stepped away, there was an emoji, there were people that applauded. All of those nonverbal cues will actually be something that'll be available in the transcript for you. So you can see what might have, you know, kind of transpired. So we're really excited about all of these capabilities for AI. You should expect these to be at a very high velocity of innovation that'll continue to keep getting launched and delivered to you. Um, and um, this is what that transcript would look like. Now, it's not just for the end user. We also care about the IT administrator making their lives easier with AI. So what have we done over there? We've said, how do we make sure that everyone who's an IT admi administrator, we make their experience magical with AI? So what we've done is basically brought everything together for IT by making sure that we have a common data lake platform. On top of that, we have an analytics platform. And then WebEx Suite, WebEx Cisco devices, as well as the WebEx Contact Center are all managed in one single administrative management plane, which is called the WebEx Control Hub, right? And this is not just something that I believe is one of the best in the collaboration industry. I think in enterprise software, it's gonna be hard to find amazing management tools like, the, like Control Hub. And so what you see over here is an example of Control Hub. And what we've done is not only made sure that you can have everything managed from the single um, location, we've also now integrated that with network performance insights with Meraki. So right from within Control Hub, you can actually have an integration into Meraki. And then we said, let's take it a step further. And that step further is providing the Cisco AI assistant for Control Hub. So what does that do exactly? What would you do with the Cisco AI system for Control Hub? Let's say that you actually had um, word from someone as an IT administrator that this um, senior executive, Donna Miller, in your organization um, has actually been having some bad quality issues for some reason. What you can do is you can just simply ask the AI assistant, hey, uh, how is Donna Miller's quality of the experience that she's having? show me any issues that she's having. And it'll actually tell you that during a meeting, Donna Miller had some choppy audio. But it's actually gonna take it a step further. It's gonna show you exactly where that choppy audio is if you wanted to see the detail. And then if you said, why did she get that choppy audio? We'd integrate that with Thousand Eyes. So Thousand Eyes is then gonna be able to provide you with details on how the network path is actually going to show you why that actually, why that issue occurred. So in this particular case, it was a local ISP that caused the issue. Sometimes it could be the app. Sometimes it could be uh, your device. Sometimes it could be the network. We'll actually be able to pinpoint exactly where that issue is for the network administrator. And the beauty about all of this is I'm asking questions in natural language, and I'm getting back responses in charts. Another big area that we actually focused on is sustainability. And what we're going to do with Control Hub is make sure that we actually add more capabilities for sustainability inside Control Hub as well. So today we are announcing a new low carbon mode for sustainability. So folks, that's the entirety of the collaboration platform. Tremendous amount of innovation in both in all the areas of our business, from networking, to security, to observability, to collaboration. We're so excited and thrilled to bring all of this capability to you. And with that, I'm gonna hand it back to my good friend, Oliver. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, G2 and all the speakers. I hope you now understand why I believe it's the best portfolio ever. We covered most of the questions that I brought up at the beginning, but we haven't talked about one 
very important topic. And that's the topic of sustainability. Yes, we have great technology, as you just heard, to support you. But this is not an easy project to get it started. But we got somebody to help you. We have a team of more than 6,000 service people, experts, that are working together with our partners to help you. And it's now up to my dear colleague, Adele Trombetta, who's running customer experience, the service teams all around EMEA, to explain you how she can help you. <laughs> Rocket. Hello. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here with you all. So now, topic is sustainability. You have heard a lot about that, but the point is, where do we start? How do we start? Well, we start with an X-ray. I know it may sound strange, but before X-ray, what happened underneath the human body was invisible to the naked eye. With X-ray, suddenly the invisible became visible. And this is exactly how we should manage sustainability. Why? Because not everybody has visibility in today's sustainability performance. Actually, we have done a study with ADC, and we found that only 18% of the IT department in EMEA, they have defined their sustainability baseline target, and they regularly track them. But you need visibility to be able to act. And that's even more important in light of the recent EU uh, initiatives with strict sustainability goals. And we can help you. Now, when you run an X-ray, you may find some challenges. You may lack tools, automation, data foundation to get the right insight. Or you may need help to use technology in order to continue to evolve your business performance while helping your sustainability goals. Or you may, you may struggle with your budget if you are not able to quantify the impact of your sustainability initiatives. But consider that 91% of the surveyed business in EMEA that saw profitable growth from daily sustainability initiatives, they align technology and sustainability goals. So sustainability is great for business too and what makes the difference is how we use the technology. Now, I'm deeply passionate about sustainability and equally passionate about your success. I want each of you to achieve profitable growth and your sustainability goals. And with the power of the technology, of Cisco technology, Silicon One, AI, full stack observability, and the amazing expert, sustainability expert, we can help. Imagine. Your data center with 40% less power capacity and 23% less operational cost. Or your offices with 50% less power consumption and cost while improving your employee experience. And if you belong to the, digital, to the utility sectors, well, we are digitizing the grid across most of the European countries. These are real and proven savings. We have done that with our partners, and we are ready to do that for each and every body of you. Now the big question is, how do you do that? Well, there is no one journey fits all. Why? Because you are unique. Your technology footprint is unique, and so will be your sustainability journey. But three steps can help each of you. The first is shape. We can run an X-ray with our maturity assessment framework to gain visibility, to align your sustainability and technology goal, and in, in third, we can build an actionable roadmap. Second step is scale. We can bring together the global expertise, experience, solutions, in order to first improve your energy consumption with real-time observability, digitize your workplace, and automate the most critical processes in many industries. Last is sustain. 
you have to sustain your journey. And to do that, we have built amazing and digital dashboards that will give you real-time data, insights, and recommendations. Now you have heard a lot from me. Why don't we hear from our customers? Please run the video. Automation will deliver better customer experiences, operational efficiencies, and help us to achieve our net zero energy goals within Vision 27. Now we're working together with Cisco to drive this transformation with a greater purpose. We are working with Cisco on our sustainability strategy for our global data centers. With their expertise, we will reduce our carbon footprint, and more importantly, increase our usage of renewable energy. Working with CX has been important to make the concept of smart buildings repeatable and sustainable. We're looking at over 70% less electricity to run 10x worth of performance. And that's better for sustainability, it's better for our costs. Cisco's part of Expos family. It was a fusion of shared values and expertise demonstrating our agility and commitment to a sustainable solution. Well, Oliver, these customers are amazing sustainability change makers. And every year at Cisco Live, talking about change makers, we celebrate the CX customer heroes. They are all with us today, so please join me in congratulating Yasser, Peter, Sandra, Ooh. Fatima, Eman, Patek, and Anders. That's Great job. It's great to see how many customers adopted this, and I hope the message was clear. Together with our partners, we're ready to help you on the sustainability journey. But this is only a small part of your job. Uh, we don't have a lot of time, but there's a lot of other stuff going on. Just tell the people what's yes. happening, what's new, what's available. Absolutely right. So improving sustainability is just one of the outcomes we can help you with. And if you need to reduce your costs or enhance your security or improve your compliance or any of the other business outcomes, we can help you with our life cycle services. With more than 6,000 experts in my team and tens of thousands of experts with our partners, we have got your back and we are ready to start. Let's go. Thanks a lot, Adele. So, we started talking about customers. And I want to end this session with a customer close to me. And we love all customers. But this is a special one. It's a very special one for us at Cisco. And you will understand in a second why he's a special one. Please welcome on stage Cisco's CIO, Fletcher Previn. So, it's good also to have you on stage, finally. Thanks for having me. So, of course, I will ask you a couple of questions. How are you looking at what we are telling our customers? Because people might not know, you are always our customer zero. You need to test whatever new idea we came up with. And you don't have a lot of options, I believe. <laughs> but let's start with AI. Because mm -hmm. I remember there was a time where we decided we built up an AI infrastructure. Share the experience how this was. Yeah, thanks. Well, so as the name implies, when you're customer zero, that means there are zero people who have done it before, and we get to find ourselves doing a lot of things for the first time, which is the challenge and the excitement. And so we needed to build a high-performance AI cluster of GPUs using Cisco Ethernet stack and be able to prove that we could do that uh, and along the way create shared infrastructure that can be used all across the company and also create a blueprint that other people can reuse, and then uh, use RDMA to prove that there's no loss in between the GPUs and the cluster. And so that's exactly what we were able to do. You can see here the diagram of it. You've got the, uh, the 400 gig uh, leaf and spine where there are 32 nodes and 256 NVIDIA H100 GPUs. Each of those GPUs are directly connected by a 400 gig optical. Uh, into the 100 gig storage network, the 100 gig uh, in-band network, uh, the control plane, and then off to the right, you've got the 
10 gig connectivity uh, for the out-of-band management, which is you know, probably a little over-provisioned for out-of-band. But hey, I work at Cisco, so if anybody gets to over-provision, it's me. And uh, ISR is for out-of-band, and uh, Cat9, uh, Nexus 9Ks and Cisco 8000s as the Ethernet uh, backbone of it. And so we, this is real. We have built this. Uh, in fact, I think we have a picture of the, uh, the, the, just to prove that it's real, look at all that beautiful cabling and, and fiber. Uh, I obviously did not cable this or it would look very different, but um, this is up and running, people are using it, and along the way we've made a, a blueprint that others can reuse. Which is the important thing. This one didn't look as nice as the picture that Jonathan was showing, well, but this is real, it's up and running, and we can help you with building the blueprint. So, this is mean we're running all our AI stuff on this one, which means everybody can use AI in the company. So we can use ChatGPT and all the other models. We have made ChatGPT uh, Copilot uh, available to all employees in the company, although we've done it in a way where it's running in a uh, private tenant so that we can control and log and audit all of the prompts that are put into it. None of that data leaves the corporate network. None of that data is ever used as public training data. Uh, it's done in a safe and secure way. Um, and uh, you know, that's allowing us then to take things like the power of an LLM, combine it with techniques like uh, retrieval augmented generation, and use some of our proprietary information to really add value and have people be able to use AI against some of the proprietary information to things like product information and, and case notes from the TAC and things like that. Perfect. Now, one more question, because everybody's not only talking about building up, but using it. And mm -hmm. are you using within your team AI to be more productive, faster, better? Yeah, for sure. We are taking advantage of the productivity benefits of things like AI in the WebEx suite. AI ops and things like Catalyst Center that is making it possible for us to uh, take things that we would maybe typically do like once every couple of months, like attenuate the radios on the wireless access points, and automate that to be something that's happening every 30 seconds by itself. So let's jump to the next hot topic, sustainability. Mm -hmm. um, everybody got big commitments, and we made a big statement what we're going to deliver. So. Did you get an extra budget to deliver on this one? Uh, I, I did not get an extra budget to deliver this. So, no. So, so the same as most of you are facing. But mm -hmm. I assume it's still ex expected that you deliver. Yeah, I mean, uh, apart from that just being important for the planet and the right thing to do, there are very practical reasons why, as the IT department, we have to aggressively get after that. If you think about Typically in a data center, historically, we would provision maybe 5 to 10 kilowatts of power per 42U rack. Uh, something like a high-performance AI GPU cluster, we need maybe 60 to 70 kilowatts of power per rack. So in order to be able to build the AI infrastructure that we're all going to have to build within the envelope of, of what we have in our data center, we have to get as efficient as possible and save as much power as possible everywhere else from the top of rack down. So, uh, yes, it is something where we're... Uh, but you need, so you need to do it anyhow, because otherwise you would not be able to manage energy costs and energy capacity. Exactly. Great. Now, as I said, you're customer zero, and you're special customer zero, because I assume you're not allowed to buy anything else in Cisco, correct? Well, why would I need to buy anything else? It doesn't even occur to me to buy anything else. Okay. <laughs> so then let us ask me, how do you get the benefit out of the entire Cisco portfolio? What is your advice to all the CIOs, the IT leader in the room. Yeah. Well, you know, if I think about um, like a complex end-to-end -end problem like hybrid work, and you think about really all of the problems that need to be addressed with that from remote access, survivable connectivity, device management, productivity, cybersecurity, SD-WAN, um, uh, observability. You know, you heard Jonathan talk about the value of the platform, and G2 talk about how fragmented some of these spaces are, that's a lot of complexity, where if I don't have to be the integrator of dozens of different niche point solutions, and I can just take advantage of the entire integrated platform, that's saving me complexity and making the IT job a lot simpler. 
Perfect. I think there's nothing more to add on such a summary, driving the complexity down with a portfolio that goes end to end. Pleasure. Thanks for being with us. It was a great pleasure to have a CIO with me on the end. Thanks to all of you for joining us. The show will continue, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.